Hello everybody, in this video we're going to be looking at dihybrid inheritance. So di meaning two. So this is looking at the inheritance of two genes at the same time. So first question then, how is it different from what we've looked at before with monohybrid inheritance? Um, as I just said, it's two genes instead of one. But apart from that, it's basically the same thing. Uh, the two genes are independent of one another, so they're inherited independently. We're just interested in looking at both of the genes, both of, therefore both of the characteristics at the same time. But the way that we would go about um, doing a dihybrid cross is the same as we would do a monohybrid cross. So let's take an example. Let's say we're looking at peas, um, and these particular peas can either be green or they can be yellow. And in this example, we're saying that the green colour is um, coded for by the dominant allele. So we'll give that a capital R and therefore the yellow colour is recessive. And then we've also got a gene for the surface. So the surface can be wrinkly or it can be smooth. And in this case, the wrinkly surface is dominant. So we'll give that a capital Y and the smooth surface is recessive. So if we were to take an example and say, okay, we've got a smooth green pea, then if we think about the possible genotypes that it could have, well, if it's uh, green, therefore it has to have at least one of our dominant, um, the dominant alleles. So it has to have at least one big R. Um, it's smooth and smooth, as we can see, is uh, recessive. So to be smooth, it has to have two copies of the recessive allele. So it must be little y, little y. Um, because we only need one copy of the dominant allele, it could also have this genotype. And then if we take another example, so we'll take a wrinkly yellow P. So wrinkly is uh, the dominant allele, so it has to have at least one copy of the big Y and the yellow colour is recessive so it has to have two copies of the recessive allele small r. So that means we could have this genotype or we could have this genotype. Okay so if we're going to be doing some dihybrid crosses we need to think about our gametes. If we're looking at the combination of the alleles that we have in the gametes um, let's take this as an example of the genotype. So we'll take an, an individual that's heterozygous for both uh, of the genes. Now remember that gametes uh, are produced during meiosis, which means that a gamete will have one of each homologous pair of chromosomes. So because we said at the beginning that these genes that we're looking at are independent of each other, that means they're on separate chromosomes. So the gamete will have to have one copy of this uh, gene, the R gene, and it will have to have one copy of the Y gene because it will inherit the, one of the chromosomes that these are on and one of the chromosomes that these are on. So we can just look at the combinations. You could have the big R, so the chromosome that this uh, allele is on, combining with the chromosome that this allele is on, and then you'd have the gamete like this, or these two could combine, or these two, and then finally these two. So with our heterozygous individual, there are four possible gametes that can be formed. It's important to notice that each of these gametes has got one allele for each gene inside it. And if we just do a really quick recap of how that looks um, in terms of what's going on with the chromosomes. So inside our uh, nucleus, we've got one pair of chromosomes which has one gene on it, and then a completely separate pair of chromosomes which has the other gene on it. And if we turn them into, uh, turn our homologous pairs so the, uh, the DNA is replicated, so this now is ready to undergo uh, metaphase, um, so it's ready to undergo anaphase. So when these chromosomes get pulled apart, eventually, after two 
stages of meiosis, you would end up with these two genes, sorry, these two chromosomes would be pulled this way, so you would end up with this chromosome uh, combination and therefore this allele combination. And these two chromosomes would be pulled this way, so eventually after two stages of, met of meiosis you'd end up with this allele combination. And we'd end up with, in total, four daughter cells. Think about what we learned about independent assortment. We know that the chromosomes could line up in a different order. So there's our first pair of chromosomes, and then in this example, our second pair of cro like chromosomes is lined up the opposite way around, which will then lead to a different combination of, uh, of alleles in our gametes. If you look, let's just turn this into the four daughter cells. If you look at the gametes and the allele combinations in our gametes, you'll see that they match what we had up here when we simply uh, worked out all the different possible combinations. So if we've got this gamete here, big R, big Y, that's down here. Little R, little Y, it's down here. Big R, little Y, here little r, big Y, down here. Okay, so how would we do a uh, dihybrid cross? So we want to know the ratio of offspring that we'd get when we cross two parents and we're looking at two genes at the same time. So we're going to take uh, this example, so we're going to have a smooth green pea as one of the parents, we're going to cross it with a wrinkled yellow pea. Now, of course, you can't necessarily, as we, as we saw previously, there are uh, a couple of different genotypes you could have for these phenotypes. So you would need to be told what those genotypes are. So these are the genotypes that we're going to use in this example. So again, remembering about the gametes, what we've just seen, we need to make sure that each gamete has got one copy of each of the genes in it. Uh, so it has to have one allele from the R gene and one allele from the Y gene. So that means we could have gametes like this for our green plant. And then there are also two possible gametes for our yellow pea plant. So the next thing is to calculate the genotypes. It's exactly the same as what we've done before. We just do our Punnett square and we put our gametes in, so the gametes from one parent would go on the top and the gametes from the other parent would go on the side and then we just put them together and we work out our offspring genotypes. So the first one here, big R, little r, big Y, little y. Just check that when you do this your offspring genotype has to have, because it's a dihybrid cross, it has to have two alleles from one gene and two alleles from the other gene. So in total we have four alleles here, which is the same as our parents had. So if we just go through the rest of the Punnett square, and then we'll just think about the phenotype. So we know that the, the green colour is the dominant allele, so anywhere where there's a capital R means we'd have a green plant, and wherever we've got two of the small r's, the recessive, homozygous recessive, we'd have yellow plants. And then for our surface, we know that the wrinkled surface has the, is the dominant allele, so anytime we've got a capital Y, we would have a wrinkled surface. And if we've got two copies of the recessive Y allele, we'd have a smooth surface. So we can see here that each of these four Firstly, they're four different genotypes, but secondly, the phenotype for each of these genotypes is different. So that means that we've got a one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one -to -one genotype ratio. And that also means that we've got a one-to-one-to-one-to-one -to -one -to -one phenotype ratio. Now the last thing I want to show you is what happens if you've got heterozygous parents. It's still exactly the same method, 
but the reason I want to show you this is because we end up with a very big Punnett square. So here are our heterozygous parent genotypes, and if we worked out our gamete combinations, we'd see that there are four possible gamete combinations when you have heterozygous parent. We've looked at that already, and this one would obviously be the same because it's the same genotype. So that means that our Punnett square would need to have four uh, rows here, so four columns, sorry, and then four rows down. So it's a 16 squared Punnett square. So it's exactly the same method, it just takes a bit longer, it means you need a little bit more space, and you've just got to be careful when you're putting these in to make sure that you look carefully and you don't make any mistakes. So if we just go through and fill this in pretty quickly. And then the tricky bit is to work out what the phenotypes are. Again, it's exactly the same. You just need to make sure you're clear about what the dominant allele and the uh, recessive allele code for. And then you have to identify what the phenotypes would be. Um, and that is your job. Okay. That's dihybrid inheritance. That's all. Thank you very much.